Hi guys, this is Danielle, your instructor for Math 120. I just wanted to walk you through the first section of Chapter 2, which is going to be an introduction of sets, and just help you th through that. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, in this section, we're going to talk about what makes sets equal to each other. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about how you can apply sets to different things, and we'll also talk about infinite sets. First thing you have to know is what a set is. A set is just a collection of objects. They're going to call the objects the elements or the members of the set, um, but a set could be made of anything. So I could say that my set is talking about fruit, and so my elements could be strawberries, apples, bananas, and so on. Okay. There's three ways that you can describe a set. You can just use a verbal description to talk about a set like I just did. You can do roster form, which is just a list of all the elements. Or you can also do set builder notation, which is used a lot in sets that are involving numbers. Um, one thing that you have to do to have a set is your set has to be well defined. So that means the contents can be clearly defined. So an example of something that is um, a well defined set is like the set of US presidents. That would be considered well defined because you can name the US presidents. Okay, something that would not be well defined would be something like um, foods that are tasty because that's subjective and um, you can make a list but everybody's list could potentially be different so that would be n something that's not well defined. Um, so one thing they'll ask you to do is they'll ask you to write a description of a set and this could be just a verbal description. Okay so for example if our set was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday an easy verbal description of this set would be days of the week. And that would be a verbal description. Super easy. Um, because that's so easy, <laughs> one other way that you could write a set is by using what's called roster form. Okay, in roster form, you're going to write the elements in braces. Um, some people call them braces, some people call them curly brackets, it really doesn't matter. But all you do is you list all the elements that are in the set um, in, in the braces. So for example, if your set is 1, 2, 3, and you have simply just listed 1, 2, 3 in the braces, that is listed in roster form. Be careful because you do have to use the curly brackets. If you use parentheses or if you use square brackets, those are not going to be considered sets, and the um, my math lab will mark those answers as wrong. So just be careful. Make sure you're using the braces. Okay, so um, often you are going to give your set a name, and typically when you name your set, you name your set with capital letters. So, for example, if I was talking about um, the set of fruit, you know, I might want to call that set F, and I would list um, F as a capital letter. And then I could start listing my fruit down inside of it, like apples, comma, whatever, bananas, whatever. But your set is going to be listed as a capital letter. One of the sets that we use often is going to be the set of natural numbers, and you use natural numbers a lot. Natural numbers can just be considered your counting numbers, okay? So when you learned how to count as a kid, you started with the number 1, you do not start with the number zero for your natural numbers. So your natural numbers go on up forever. They're one, two, three, to infinity. And there's no decimals, there's no fractions, there's no negatives, there's no zero. That's going to be called your natural numbers. Okay, so for example, if I asked you to write the following in roster form, the set A, notice capital letter, is the set of natural numbers that is less than six. Okay, so if you were going to do that, you would put your curly brackets down, you would write your capital letter A for to rec be your set, use your curly brackets, and then you would list the numbers 1 through 5. Because remember, your natural numbers are whole numbers that are greater than 0, so that would be your set in roster form. Um, so another example, set B is the set of natural numbers that is less than or equal to 80. 
Okay, I don't honestly expect you to sit there and write down 80 numbers. So if you want to skip numbers, you are absolutely fine to use the ellipsis, the dot, 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 so that you can skip numbers. But you do need to know your natural numbers. Start at 1 and count up. And then because they said less than or equal to 80, you would need to include the 80 in your set. If they just said they wanted the numbers less than 80, you would go up to 79 and you would not include it. That would be just less than. But they said less than or equal to, so you would include your 80. Okay, a symbol that you're going to see often is this little E guy right here. That symbol is read as is an element of. So for example, if I wrote X and then the little E and N, that means X is an element of the natural numbers. Okay. You can also use the little e with a slash through it. That is read as is not an element. So if you see something like that, x with the little e and the slash in, you would read that as x is not an element of the natural numbers. You're going to use that little e in the set builder notation. Okay, so set builder notation is going to be more condensed than um, roster form because you're going to write basically a little formula. Okay, so it's a formal statement that's supposed to describe all of the members. You will still put them in the braces, which remember is your curly brackets, um, but you will have to use a variable. So a lot of times we use x, x as our variable that we like. Okay, so for example, write the set b equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in set builder notation. Okay, so one way that you could do that is you could put your curly brackets and then you write your X and you draw a vertical line you read that as such that okay so X such that X is in the set of natural numbers that's not enough though because natural numbers go up to infinity so you would also have to say and X is less than or equal to 5 that would be one way you could write it you could also say x such that x is in the set of natural numbers and x is less than 6. So the bottom one, the x is less than 6, would not include the 6, but it would tell you to go up to that number but not include it. Um, and then, of course, you could give a verbal description, too, if you liked. You could say all numbers between 1 and 5, um, including 1 and 5, you could say all numbers, all natural numbers less than or equal to 5. And, and if it's a verbal description, you would just write it in a sentence. Okay, um, so for example, sometimes they'll give you the set builder notation and they want you to go backwards. So if I was to read this in words, this would say x such that x is in the set of natural numbers and x is greater than or equal to 2 and smaller than 8. You could also say that x is um, between 2 and 8 and it includes the number 2. Um, if you were going to write it in roster form, you would write it out in the curly brackets 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but you would not include the 8. Okay, so everything we've worked with so far has been what's called a finite set. A finite set is just a set that has an ending. It's a countable set, okay? So for example, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You can count how many elements there are. This one has five elements. That would be a finite set. If the set goes on and on and on forever, it is called infinite, okay? Infinite sets never end, and they're technically not countable because you would never get to the end of them. Okay, so an example, the entire set of natural numbers, also known as the counting numbers, would be an infinite set because it never stops. Okay, sometimes they'll ask you whether two sets are equal. In order to be equal, the only thing that has to be true is all of the elements in the first set must be the same as the elements in the second set. It is okay if they're listed in a different order. As long as all the elements are identical, then they're good. Okay, so for example, set 1, 2, 3 and set 3, 2, 1 are equal even though they're all out of order because they have the same elements. 
Um, if you're asked for the cardinal number, they will symbolize that with a lowercase letter n, and then they will put the name of the set in parentheses. Okay, so for example, lowercase n with a in parentheses is asking you for the cardinal number of set a. If you see that, all that is asking you is how many numbers are in the set. That's all they want to know. So if you look at the example that set A is 1, 2, 3, and they want to know the cardinal number, you just have to count how many objects are in the set. Set A has three objects, and you could say that the cardinal number of set A is 3. If you look at set B, set B is England, Brazil, and Japan. The cardinal number of set B is also 3 because they have the same number of elements. Okay? So it's important because that will tell you whether two sets are equivalent or not. In order for two sets to be equivalent, all that must be true is that their cardinal numbers are the same. Okay, so the number of elements are the same. So for example, if you look at set D, which is A, B, C, it has a cardinal number of 3. If you look at set E, apple, orange, pear, it has a cardinal number of 3. Because their cardinal numbers are both 3, these would be called equivalent sets. And, um, one thing that comes from that is since equal sets have to have the exact same components, all equal sets are also equivalent sets. But be careful though, that does not go the other way around. Equivalent sets just have to have the same number of components not the identical component. So equivalent sets are not necessarily equal sets. So for example, again, if you look at set D, A, B, C, and set E, apple, orange, pear, yes, they both have three items each, so they are equivalent, but the items are not the same. So in order for them to be the same, I would need A to be in set E. I would need B to be in set E. I would need C to be in set E, and since it's not, they are not equal, although they are equivalent. Um, a special definition that you're going to get is the definition called one-to-one. -one. Okay, a one-to-one -one correspondence happens if every element in the first set can be matched with exactly one element of the second set. Okay, so meaning if there's four elements in set A, there has to be four unique elements in set B. So an example would be like if I listed some states like North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida. That could be my set S. I could also make a list of uh, capitals, Columbia, Raleigh, Tallahassee, Atlanta. If every state has one capital and one unique capital and they can be matched together, then that would be considered a one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay, so for example, the capital of North Carolina is Raleigh. One capital and only one capital. The state Georgia has a capital of Atlanta. One and only one. Florida has a capital of Tallahassee. One and only one. South Carolina has a capital of Columbia. One and only one. Okay, so that would be considered a one-to-one -one correspondence. If you find that a state has two capitals, like, I don't know, you could say Missouri has a capital of Kansas City and St. Louis, which, by the way, neither of those are the capital of Missouri, but just go with it. If that happens, Missouri has two capitals, KC and St. Louis. That is bad because it is not going to one place. It's going to two different places, and that would not be a one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay. Okay, another thing that can happen is you can get what's called a null set or an empty set. All that means is that there is no elements in it, okay? And there's notations that they use. Um, often you'll see the curly brackets with nothing in it, or you'll see a circle with a slash. If you see either of those notations, that represents the null set or the empty set. So if I asked you what the cardinal number was, the number of items that is in either of those sets, you would say zero. Now, they will try and trick you. They will sometimes give you the curly brackets and stick the null symbol inside of the curly brackets. That is not the empty set. This represents the set that contains the null set. So if I asked you what the cardinal number was, you would say that there's one item inside of it. So that's not a null set. 
same thing if I stick the number zero inside of the curly brackets. How many numbers land or how many particles or elements are in those curly brackets? There is one item, so that is not a null set because it has a cardinal number of one. Um, another definition you need to be familiar with is the universal set. Okay, the universal set, which they often use a capital U to talk about the universal set, represents um, the elements of the conversation. Okay, so when they tell you the universal set, any discussion that, that is surrounding has to be from the universal set. Okay, so for example, I could say the universal set is male actors. So you could start saying, well, elements of that are John Travolta and Tom Cruise and Orlando Bloom, and you could start listing off male actors. You would not be able to list um, things like Penelope Cruz because she's a female actress, so that would not be part of the universal set. Okay, so another example, I use numbers. Um, I could say the universal set is the natural numbers 1 through 10. Okay, so I would not be allowed to use the number 100 because it is outside of the universal set. Okay, guys, that's a real quick synopsis of this um, 2.1 section. I hope it is helpful. If not, um, check out your textbook and hit that help me solve this button in my math lab. Also, feel free to post questions in D2L.